Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tai. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be looking at this HP Pavilion, which has a no bootable device error message. So it's basically not seeing the internal drive. So what we're going to do is to basically shut it down and then we're going to see what the issue is exactly. So this exact model is the 14CE3600SA. It's the 14-inch uh, model. Um, basically, we're going to take it apart and look at the hard drive itself. So basically, we have these screws here. So I'm just going to use my standard Phillips head screwdriver and then pull these screws out. Have a look at the drive that's installed. It should be an M2 solid state drive. So I've got the three screws out here, and then we have um, screws underneath the stickers here. So these are the kind of laptop feet stickers. It says it's an M2.5 screw. Let's just check underneath the other legs. Ooh, I can see a security screw here. So this has got an M2.5 as well. So once those screws are removed, let's try to take this apart. So I'm just using the pry tool to kind of push this gap. Point, we'll just go all the way around. Try to be a bit careful around these ports. Then that bottom case all comes off and then we're left with the interior. So we have a really nice space for a 2.5 inch SATA drive which doesn't have the connector and the main thing is that we cannot see the solid state drive. So this, this particular drive is a Ramaxel drive. I've never heard of that particular brand. It looks like a standard M2. Let's have a look at it and see if we can access any of the data on it. So we've got the sticker on here. Then I'm gonna take off the little mounting holder. So it's really important you don't strip the screw as I've nearly done here. So just make sure you use the right size screwdriver. And then we've got our M2 uh, Generation 3 NVMe drive. So we're gonna try and access the data on here. We might have to wipe it if necessary. 256 gigabytes of storage. Let's see if this will work. So what we're going to use today is this Anchor uh, USB-C solid state drive enclosure so I can see the contents of this data. We just need to insert the solid state drive into here. And then I'm just going to screw in the mounting screw so I can now slip over the enclosure. And then we can use this USB-C cable to plug it into the computer and see what's going on. So I've plugged in the solid state drive and it's appearing as an uninitialized drive. So this is a bit strange because this should have a Windows installation, but uh, either we're gonna have to replace the solid state drive or we'll have to wipe this. But I'm a bit concerned that this uh, unallocated drive might recur again. So uh, I'll ask the client and see what they want to do. Okay, so what we basically decided to do is to order a new solid state drive. So we've got this 250 gigabyte Crucial P2 
NVMe.m.2 solid state drive here. And what we're gonna do is to install it into this computer, replace the original solid state no name drive, and then reinstall Windows 10 on this and then get this up and running again. So I'm just gonna open up this uh, PT solid state drive. And then what we have is the solid state drive itself. So this is the P2 M.2 2280, 250 gigabyte solid state drive. It's the kind of standard length. So what we need to do is uh, pop this one out and then we can fit it inside this slot here. So it just kind of slots in like that. It kind of goes in at this funny angle, but uh, that's okay, that's normal. What we're gonna do is mount it correctly on that slot there. So I'm gonna take our mounting screw and then just screw this very lightly like that. And that's done. So this is quite an interesting setup. I wish we had the SATA slot here. It's interesting we only have one fan here as well. It's clearly space for two, probably for the higher powered CPUs. Anyway, now that that's done, all we need to do is to pop the cover back on. So we just line up the hinge cover here and I'm just gonna press down. I'm just gonna pop this back in. Just make sure everything's pressed down correctly. And then we've got our black screws which go into these slots here. Our black screw is here. Then this pops in like so. And then we've got our three silver screws that go in the front three parts here. This is quite an interesting setup because this is actually very easy to take apart compared to some other kind of ultrabook setups that I've seen in the past. So, there, you know, there are only five screws to take apart. The hardest part is just taking the, um, the plastic part off the bottom because it's quite tight, but that's also a good thing too. It means we don't need as many screws. So let me flip this back over. So once we've put everything back together, we want to install Windows 10 on the new solid state drive and get everything set up back to normal. So I've prepared a Windows 10 USB installer. If you want to learn how to make this, then please follow the link in the description. I've made another video about how to create a Windows 10 USB installer. What we're gonna do is to plug this into the side of the computer. So in order to get the Windows 10 installer to boot up, I'm just gonna press the power button and then I'm gonna press the F10 button. repeatedly in order to get into the BIOS settings. And here what we want to do is just double check that the boot options have the USB boot enabled and that we have the network boot enabled. So if you have a different HP laptop or a different computer entirely, they might be different key combinations to get to this screen. It might be F2, it might be F10, or it might be delete button. Every computer is slightly different, but on this particular HP model, it's the F10 key in to get into the BIOS setup utility. And we just wanna make sure that the USB drive is part of the boot order. So because we don't have an OS boot manager on this computer, because the solid state drive is a brand new one, which is completely empty, then it'll default to the USB flash drive. So in this particular instance, I don't actually need to change anything. I'm just gonna press save, changes and exit. And then uh, when it reboots, it should boot into this flash drive. So because I've left this in, it's booted straight into the Windows 10 installer, which I've prepared on my USB drive. So all I need to do here is click next and then install now. Once I get to the screen, I'm gonna click accept the license terms and then click next. And then what I wanna do is to use the custom option. So I wanna click custom and it's detected that we have a new solid state drive here. So what I wanna do is click next. And then it's going to go through this entire installation process. It'll take a little bit of time. So make sure that you have enough battery power and that takes about half an hour or so to install it onto the solid state drive. Use your voice or the keyboard along the way 
And if you'd like me to stay quiet, just select the little microphone icon towards the bottom of your screen. So we can turn off the microphone for Cortana and then basically we can just go through the standard Windows 10 setup. So now we're logged into the Windows 10 desktop. It's all working correctly now. So the solid state drive has been fully installed and we've got a fully functional copy of Windows 10 on this computer. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.